Uh, of course, even in this last and most celebrated part, perhaps, that you played of Alice in Room at the Top, mm. it was a, a, what many English people thought was a, was, was a wicked woman. I mean, how did the public react to Alice? Wonderfully, because it's a... I'd like to say something about that part. It's, a, it's one of the best part you can have to play. I mean, I've played uh, uh, bad women and, and wicked women, and, and it doesn't pay. I mean, the people don't like you after that. They hate you, and they're right, because if you do it well, they just don't like you because you're hateable. Uh, this part is such a warm, wonderful part because she's uh, not very young, she's not very pretty, she's honest, though she cheats her husband, but he's not a good husband, so... And, uh, and she dies on the top, so... So it's, it's like a piece of cake for an actress. One thing right ahead. My referring to Simone Signoret's character as the stereotypical suffering wife is not meant dismissively. Because while it's true that Alice Askill is essentially that, the wonderful thing about this performance is that it shatters all expectations usually associated with a role like this. Simone Signoret took a cliched character and gave it a new and swelling spin that does not come from either the script or the direction, but simply from her own acting and distinctive screen presence. But with her performance, Simone Signoret did not only overcome any established ideas about her character, but also about stardom in general and how a leading lady could look like and behave in an environment so determined to follow a small pattern of accepted stereotypes. But how did she do it? Simone Signoret began her career during the years of World War II in various uncredited bit parts. Her talent and unique looks brought her more attention in the post-war years in movies like Phantomas and Backstreets of Paris. During that time, she married director Yves Olegray, who cast her in her first leading role in Dédé d'Anvers, where, also for the first time, she played the signature character of her career, the prostitute with the heart of gold. The same year, she also proved that she could handle roles in international productions with her first English-speaking part in Against the Wind. Don't laugh at me, woman. Don't dare laugh at me. Stop it, will you? Stop it. I'm sorry, Johnny. But I don't love you. Both her performances as well as her looks garnered her some international attention, but a big breakthrough came in the next decade with more prominent roles as well as her marriage to Yves Montand, which turned them into one of the most famous French couples. She started the 50s with Laurent and starred in other big roles in movies such as Therese Raquin, Les Diaboliques, Casque d'Or and The Crucible, with the last two garnering her awards by the British Academy as the best foreign actress, which continued to raise her profile. However, the peak of her international success came in 1959 with her role as Alice Askill in the controversial drama Room at the Top. Simon Signoret, one of Europe's greatest stars, two-time award winner for the best actress of the year, now in another brilliant portrayal as Alice Askill. She was French and all woman, ten years older than Joe, ten years more experienced. Unfortunately, I could not find any information on how Simon Signore was cast in this role, which of course meant to make the very British character of Alice French in the movie version of John Brain's novel. It seems that the movie makers originally wanted Vivian Lee for the part, who declined. English actress Jean Kent was very eager to play Alice, later stating, it was this old English thing that only foreigners have sex appeal. And it seems that this hit the nail on the head that the casting of Simone Signoret was the result of a general stereotype thinking that sees women from France as sexually more aggressive and liberated than women from England or the US. I'd like a picture of you like that. There is a picture of me in the nude, somewhere. <laughs> You're joking. No, there really is. Turning Alice A's girl French did, at least to my knowledge, not cause any complaints. And if there were, they were basically forgotten by the moment Room at the Top hit the theaters. The production itself was mostly praised by critics who recognized that, while the story did not really have anything new to tell, it was still done in an engaging manner and much more daring than other movies from this time. The award, this is for the, Mr. Havlin is going to read you the name of the film that Room. has won the award from the best or, or from any source. Room at the top. 
However, most of all, Room at the Top was the beginning of a maybe short, but still very intense love affair between the American public and Simone Signore, who was described as the biggest sensation since Marlene Dietrich. And there were a couple of reasons for that. One, her performance in Room at the Top. Basically, all critics agreed that Simone Signore walked away with the picture, stating that she played her role with a directness and lack of theatrics, which are cumulatively impressive calling her unforgettable and magnificent in the smallest scenes, conveying words of meaning with a lifted eyebrow, a sudden breath, a shoulder shrug or quiet intonation, and predictions for an Oscar nomination, maybe even a win were immediate. And two, because of her off-screen personality and what it represented, both in regards to the general ideas of movie stardom as well as the character of Alice Askill. At this point, only a couple of actresses older than Simone Signore had won the Best Actress Oscar. Marie Dressler, Joan Crawford, Shirley Booth, Anna Magnani, Ingrid Bergman and Susan Hayward. But what separated Simone Signore from these other actresses was the nature of the part. Alice was the most sexual character that had been seen up to this moment in this category. And the fact that she was not played by a young actress who fulfilled Hollywood's conventional notions of beauty, but by an ancient 39-year-old woman, turned Simone Signore into such an unprecedented sensation. John, I, I think it should be said that Miss Sinuai's performance in Room at the Top is one of the most beautiful jobs that's Thank been you, done in movies in a long time. That it was. I agree. Here, here. No, I agree. <laughs> it won an Academy Award, I believe. It. Now, actually. Uh... However, breaking with established traditions is not only exciting, but will also be met by criticism. Newspapers noted the unusual appeal of Simon Signore but were also eager to highlight what they considered her shortcomings. She was described as far from beautiful, a bit dumpy, carelessly groomed and admitting to 39. Even more, reviewers warned that you'll probably be shocked when she appears on the screen the first time. You may even say, this woman has an attraction? I mean... Fuck you. If you watch Room at the Top and don't think that Simon Signore is one of the most beautiful human beings you ever laid eyes on, then there is something wrong with you. Sorry, I don't make the rules. In fact, Simone Signore was only one year older than Doris Day when she made Pillow Talk, and nobody focused on her age. And similarly, age was also not an issue for Susan Hayward or Ingrid Bergman. But again, these cases were different because in their movies, sex was either a joke or played no role at all. And they also had the luxury of having grown older in front of the camera, and audiences still had the image of them as younger stars. Simone Signore, however, was largely unknown before Room at the Top and was therefore approached completely differently. As with Anna Magnani a couple of years earlier, the media did not know how to react to Simone Signore, but was still fascinated and could not deny the sheer power of her acting talent. And what also put Simone Signore on the map was that her husband was filming Let's Make Love with Marilyn Monroe during the time of Oscar voting. Speculations of an affair between the French star and Hollywood sex symbol were regularly plastered across the news and kept Simon Signore's name in the papers too. Now you're on the very pinnacle of fame as a film actress. Of course, you're gossiped about an enormous lot and I expect you sometimes find this as a persecution. Do you find it unpleasant to have your private life gossiped about in the press? Yes, sure. I Is do. it happening very much? Yes, lately, yes. Everyone involved denied an affair and the marriage between Simon Signore and Yves Montand lasted until her death in 1985, but she was completely aware of what was going on. See, I don't even know how far to pursue this, but there was more than the professional relationship there. Was there or am I completely wrong? No, it's what they say, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, well... <laughs> Accompanying her husband to the US while he worked on the movie also gave Simone Signore the opportunity to actively campaign for the Oscar, and she herself said how for months she had nothing to do but sit around in Beverly Hills and shake hands. Which obviously paid off. However, Simone Signore's performance also spoke for itself in this Oscar race. She had the by far most praised performance of the year with awards from different critics groups and a Best Actress Award in Cannes. She was a strong runner-up to Audrey Hepburn at the New York Film Critics Awards, where she received 7 votes compared to Audrey's 8, and most Oscar predictions were between those two, with some giving an outside chance to Elizabeth Taylor. Okay, but what do I think about Simon Signore's award-winning performance? 
Right ahead, I have to agree with critics back then that she easily walks away with room at the top and exactly for the reasons that everyone pointed out. Her distinct French presence which makes her so out of place in this very British surrounding and gives her character an additional sense of loneliness and distance as well as her completely unconventional approach to this role. Are you very unhappy, Alice? Not very. I mean, look at the performances that won Best Actress in the years before. All I want is my own name and a modest job to buy sugar for my coffee. Will you you can't it? believe that, can you? Ha! Listen to me, I'm laughing too. Ha <laughs> ha Damn them, damn them, damn them! Get your mess off! And now we have this. What to hell with you? Do you think our love is just like a layer of dirt that I can wash it off? This is not an exaggeration. This is the most dramatic acting of Simone Signoret in Room at the Top. And it's also in no way meant dismissively of these other actresses, but just supposed to show how different her work is in comparison to almost every other performance in this category. While the character of Alice might have provided many opportunities to go big and add the expected outbursts and sense of despair, Simone Signoret's performance is completely internal, creating a stark and unforgettable contrast between the passion of the character and her calm exterior. Oh, you're very brave and very moral all of a sudden. That's what you like, isn't it? Let's show and lingerie. Hardly any other performance in movie history so beautifully combines the words mature and erotic in one character. Alice can be a mentor, a guide, a companion, as well as a lover, but never in a forced way. I like you. I, I don't mean sex, I mean like you. I like to talk to you. I just like you. Rather, she accepts life as it comes towards her. She never actively tries to flirt with Joe, but simply fascinates him by her sheer magnetism, which Simon Signoret obviously has to offer in spades. Simone Signoret is able to communicate a strong sense of self-worth in Alice, her intelligence and experience, as well as her sex appeal, without focusing on any of these aspects. Her cool, composed nature speaks for herself without needing any explanation or background. Simone Signoret also beautifully underlines the tragedies of Alice without making them the only aspect of her performance. Sadness and worry are clearly constant followers of Alice, sadness for a state of life, worry that she cannot be able to hold Joe due to her age, but they never feel like Alice's only characteristics. Imagine me as I was ten years ago, and you as you are now. There were no lines then. Would you have loved me and wanted to marry me? Still, Simon Signoret sometimes does exaggerate the sadness of Alice a bit, even in her underplaying. You know I was going to take Elspeth to Manchester to the ballet. You know I arranged it weeks ago. So it is no surprise that Simone Signoret always shines most in scenes that ask her to portray her depths of feelings, that constant sadness, that hesitation of joy and sexual maturity, and mostly focus on her face and her ability to fill her dialogue with experience and passion. Well, you must take hold of me as if you meant it. I'm not fragile, you know, I won't break. Simone Signoret also works perfectly in her relationship with co-star Lawrence Harvey. She's neither swept completely off her feet, nor does she treat this affair as just another romance that comes and goes, but you sense how, even if she constantly remains skeptical, she hopes that this connection will be different than what she has experienced so far. Will you come and have a coffee with me? No, but you may buy me a drink. And Simone Signoret also deserves praise simply for giving Alice so much depth and complexity despite the limitations of the script. Alice is neither a very large part, nor is she given any true characterization outside of her relationship with Joe. But Simone Signoret is able to tell the entire story of her life with just a glance, a hesitation or an unspoken word. Still, even if Simone Signoret does actively avoid giving a performance that is only out to gain the audience's sympathy, she certainly benefits from the way Alice is written as the character's misery is clearly laid out and presented to the viewers. But more than that, by creating such a stark aura of mystery in her role, Simone Signoret is not quite as effective when she is asked for a stronger open reaction and involvement in the moment of the scene. 
there's always been somebody to take care of our job. You got extra. You told me yourself. Because you got along so well with the guards. And even if she's able to go beyond the limits of the script, she cannot give reason to all the questions surrounding Alice. Why is she so obsessed with Joe? Why did her life end up the way it did? How did her marriage turn into the loveless relationship it is now? While the answers to these questions might not feel truly necessary, it would have been nice if her approach had somehow been more grounded and less lyrical, no matter how effective it may be. But even with the slight criticism, this remains one of the most unique performances that we can ever see in this category. And it's fascinating to see Simone Signore do so much with so little, and be so unique with something so unexceptional. Dites-moi, Simone Signore, quelle est la réaction d'une actrice française qui reçoit un Oscar à Hollywood oh, C'est une... extraordinaire comme sensation, parce que tout, tout s'y mêle, la fierté personne, personnelle euh, et une reconnaissance éperdue à des gens qui donnent ça à un étranger, ce qui n'est plus le cas en Amérique. Ils ont été extraordinairement gentils. Bon, D'abord, ils ont été gentils tout le temps. Dès qu'on est arrivé, ils ont été gentils. Et pour Yves et pour moi. Mais euh, ça a été une montée comme ça qui s'est gouranée par ce soir, on dirait une blague, enfin on dirait que c'est comme dans un mauvais scénario. Je dis ça au soir, mais c'est vrai. Un mauvais scénario, on raconte une histoire de pomme de fer. Enfin.